Welcome to my weekly pod. My name is Martin and I'm an artist. This week I'm going to talk about film. I've been a filmmaker for over 20 years and I've been making all kinds of films. When I started, things were a little bit different than now, but it was the beginning of the digital era. So in that sense, I was lucky that I was there from the start. And ever since then, it just evolved and become what is the film industry and the TV industry today. And with social media, it just exploded, basically. So it is exciting to be a filmmaker today because, because suddenly film and video, any, any kind of moving images, are so important in the everyday life of every person on the planet. And it's very much because of internet and smartphones. It's yes, easy to access with you nowadays. And for a filmmaker, it means that everything changes, you know, almost by the day. What kind of videos you can produce, what kind of videos are produced, what kind of videos you will produce in the future or just tomorrow. And this whole phenomenon that you could actually call a revolution have made me think about the media in, in a different way. When you are a filmmaker, you try to tell a story or you illustrate something or you express your feelings or a mood or something else. Film could be basically anything. And this whole idea what film is and moving images are today is changing in itself. If it would be like 40 years ago, it would be easy to explain what is TV, what is film, what is, it, what is a motion picture. Um, there wasn't even such thing as a web series, for example. But today, film can be almost anything. And in a way, it's really lovely. It's a democratization that has taken place within the film community and for the whole world to take part in. But at the same time, when you work with it, you understand it can be difficult, for example, to, to find an audience for your videos. And especially if you make artistic films. And that's what I've been interested in mostly during these plus 20 years I've been working with this. For me to discover artists like Bergman or Tarkovsky or Stanley Kubrick has been really important for me in my filmmaking. But I also realized that the kind of artistic films that they made, those films are not made anymore. You cannot make a, a longer film like that because you cannot sell tickets at the box office. And the truth is that there might not be a box office tomorrow. Because with social media and internet, and I'm not whining here, but this is just the fact. With social media and internet taking over, there's a big chance or a big risk, depending on how you look at it, that people won't go to the movie theater anymore. Because any format that is long, say 90 minutes, two hours, two and a half hours, is just a one-off show that is not a reoccurring event. And that doesn't work with social media. Everything on social media is reoccurring in some way. That, that's why it's serious that you can go back to every week and listen to even my pod, which is supposed to be weekly, but might not be every week because I have other work to do. It's a reoccurring event. So that's the kind of direction we're going into. Then certain kind of films are not made anymore. And it's sad. I mean, seriously, it's just really sad. I grew up with Tarkovsky films or Bergman films, but that's just the case, you know, everything changes. So the question is then, if you are a filmmaker today, what shall you do? What can you do to make, make films that, that people find interesting today? Something you can definitely see is that shorter formats work really, really well. Especially films that are like three to five minutes that maybe consists of some other elements like poetry, it could be spoken word, or I've been working a little bit myself with these kind of productions, or it can be something humorous, or it can be, you know, just, just something short, because then it's easy to distribute and people can actually keep the attention to watch the whole thing, which is still a really, really difficult to make anyone to do these days when everything should take like three seconds. So the development is shorter and shorter and shorter. 
there's no doubt about that. And we will see where it kind of ends. Some things just doesn't work anymore. And if you think of the beginning uh, in, in the 2001 Space Odyssey film, for example, where nothing happens for a very long time. I, I thought it was extremely enjoyable to watch when I watched it back in the days. Um, I don't think any producer would produce anything like this anymore. Because if you don't get the audience attention in the first frame, well, then your audience is lost. Probably not possible to make anymore. Or at least no one would pay for it. You can do it yourself, uh, but you will never get any money for it. So then comes the other question. Does this mean that the art films or artistic films, are they going extinct? No, absolutely not. Art will always survive. There's always a new path. There's always a way forward. So of course it won't die at all. On the other hand, if you look at it in another way, there have never been as many video productions, films in the world as now. So of course people who are creative come up with new solutions, new ideas. And there are also one big venue for all these artistic films. And that are the film festivals. It's still the most important place for independent filmmakers who make artistic films. If the film festivals would disappear, then that kind of film would disappear probably as well. But you know, internet is a strange place and there's always some new phenomena or some new culture or subculture that replaces something old. As a filmmaker, you can say like this, there's a lot to think about, but not much you can do about it. Now, the, the real positive thing with all this is the possibility that everyone has to make films today. When I started out, it was just so expensive to make, especially when it came to cameras and gear and things like that, because you couldn't even afford to rent it. But now you can make a video with your smartphone, so it's very different. To produce something professional, you still need money, of course. So same thing with other things within art and the creative industries. When you make something professional, people need to get paid and it costs money. So then it's a different thing. For the years, I also made some film music. Uh, not so much, actually, as I should have, maybe. But I will let you listen to a piece I made. So that was some of my film music. If you wonder if this music ever been played in any film as a soundtrack, it has not. So it just sits there, you know. As, as most projects you make, like, I don't know, 99%, they are never published. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of, you know, how it works, actually. It, it, it would be nice to publish some of it later on. Now back to filmmaking. One of the trends that you can kind of clearly see uh, when filmmaking is something called local cinema. And it has been around now for quite a few years. And it's, it's like some film production has become more local. You know, like you make a film for an audience that is the audience, you know, in the region or the province. Now, wherever in the world you may live. And it's just for that audience. It might even be on your dialect or about things that you know only if you live in that place. I don't know 
what the idea behind that is, but it's just something that kind of taken off last five years or 10 years. It's becoming more popular to make these films. And also another bigger trend in the film industry is the adaptation of novels, which I think seriously destroys very much of the motion picture industry. That no original scripts are written anymore for films, or they are written, but no one makes films from this from them is I think it's it's just devastating for the whole film industry. Not all novels make good films. And there are no reason really to make films from novels other than one, it might be a good story. Two, the book already have a big audience. And the second reason is the only reason, really, films are made from books. It sells. And I think it's sad because original stories on film are sometimes wonderful because they are written only for film. And it means they are not adapted. They're made for the media, for the format, which is, of course, the best. But with more and more novels filmed and books adapted, it's impossible to get back to, to the original scripts, which is really, really sad. And this is not against literature. I mean, I write myself. But some things are better as books and some things are better as films. Now I'm going to talk about my own filmmaking a little bit. But before that, we will hear some more music. So that was a piece called Harmonium. Normally I don't make that much ambient music, but this is actually something I'm working on that is ambient. So now about my own art films. Actually the first film I made was an art film. I made it together with a friend and we filmed for I don't remember how long time and we had it together with some music and, and it was kind of the first art film I was ever involved in. For me, that was important because, first of all, it was important to experiment. What can you do with the image? How can you film something or make it look different or make it look like this or this? And uh, just explore the medium itself. And we also got this film to film festival, which was pretty cool. And after that, I want to make more experiments and more artistic films like that. So in a way, I just kind of continued from there on. And for the years, it has been different kind of stuff. But what I'm doing right now is that I'm exploring these shorter formats that I talked about in the beginning, that I think that today we don't have the attention span to watch, you know, like a bottle rolling that you can find, for example, in one of Tarkovsky's films for, for several minutes. We just don't have the attention span to do that anymore. I don't have it anymore. So now I try to make this three to five minutes long films and mostly I work with some kind of music or soundscape because I think if you start with the sound it's somehow easier to put pictures to the sound 
in post-production, just like when you make an animated film. You start with the script, of course, but, but then you make the sound before you put the pictures there. So that's what I'm working on, a kind of hybrid between sound and music and moving images. And I guess that if you would analyze it, you would say it's kind of contemporary filmmaking with a, I don't know, postmodern touch or something like that. And I think it's typical for a time as well that when we make artistic films today, I mean, opposed to what Tarkovsky did, for example, is that we, we tend to mix medias much more, mix expressions as well. And it's not so strange that maybe an art film today could look more like a music video or it could be a poetry slam film. Some of them are quite famous on, on the YouTube. I even seen films with poetry that have 7 million viewers. I mean, that's quite amazing when you think about it. Numbers don't mean so much. The film itself is more important. But still, I mean, who would have thought that millions of people would like to watch when someone read poetry, either if it's just by themselves or if they read poetry to some kind of image and music. I think, I think that's really stunning. If you would make a two hours art film now, you will not get two million viewers on it. I'm 100% sure. That. But a three minute poetry film, that could work. So I guess that's also what I'm doing myself. Mixing different expressions, different genres into experimental films or artistic films. I also think it's important to have a theme to work with. And for me, the theme in my films are the same theme as in my art, which is man's relationship to nature. And it goes for all my projects and also for my music, actually. That's also why I like Debussy so much, because he was also a guy who took a lot of inspiration from nature. So that's also something to, to think about when you make film. You have to have a theme. The theme can change, but for most people, it's always the same. And that goes for most things we do. We often repeat what we do day in, day out. Sounds boring, but that's how you become better on what you do. You redo really what you do all the time. That's how you become skilled on something. That was a short piece from my song Garden of Eden. If you want to listen to Garden of Eden and other songs from my album Queen of the Stars, you can find the album in the links on my Instagram. If you listen to this on YouTube, you can find the whole album as a YouTube playlist. I chose Garden of Eden to this podcast because I think it's one of my singer-songwriter songs that are most like filmic or cinematic because it has the strings and it has this big soundscape. Now to something else about making films, and especially artistic films. And it's a little bit what I talked about in the beginning, that it's hard to get fundings, it's hard to find money to make films, and it costs money to make professional films. If you ever wonder why people spend 10 years of making a motion picture film, it's not because it takes 10 years to make a film. It's because it takes 10 years to find money for the film. And it doesn't matter if you make expensive films or less expensive films. If you actually are trying to get money to get your film funded, you will have to wait a long time to actually finish your projects. I don't say it as a warning if you want to make your own films, but it's really good to know that this is one of the reasons it takes such a long time to make a film. And also one thing that is really good to know is that some projects can be funded and some cannot. It's just impossible. And something I learned very dearly is that those projects you really want to do, you will never get one dime. And other projects that work better to sell 
as an ID, those are the projects you will get money for. And when you make artistic films, that can be very, very frustrating because sometimes you get this great vision, you know that, okay, this will look so good on film or this will become a good film. You just know it with your intuition that this will just work. But it's an ID that is really hard to sell and therefore there is no money. Well, IDs that are easier to sell sometimes make worse films. And it's just how things are. The director of photography for Ingmar Bergman, Sven Nyqvist, he actually had written in one of his books about this that sometimes it was great to make a film, but the result was terrible. <laughs> sometimes it was terrible to make the film, but the result was great. And it's the same thing with money and ideas that sometimes it sounds good on paper, but it actually is not a good film. So it must be very, very difficult for those who give the money to have any idea what the end result will be when not even the filmmaker know what the end result will be themselves. But this I can say about the whole process, that if you want to make artistic films and you really think it's cool to experiment, I'm not very sure you ever will get any funding because these kind of projects never get money. So that's a good thing to know. Experiments will be experiment. But even if you do other production as a filmmaker, I think it's important to do this artistic stuff and it's important to experiment because then you also learn things you can use in your everyday production. For example, if you edit a video for someone. But nevertheless, with or without money, people still make films that they really want to do. Not just because it's easier to get financial support for a project. And I think that's really cool. We have to keep doing what we do, no matter what. That's a little bit what art is about. Anyways, keep telling the stories that are important to you. I'm going to end this podcast with playing Garden of Eden. During 2020, that has been a difficult year for many, I was lucky to be able to film the music video for Garden of Eden. And this music video mixes a little bit what I talked about in the podcast music video with art film with experimental stuff and with music which have a bit of cinematic touch or almost like film music a little bit you can find it on the youtube channel and the latest version is the remix version so see you guys thank you for listening here is garden of eden mm-hmm.